So, uh, you know what drives me crazy is uh, when people, uh, when they when they think that you look like somebody, like for example, like like people constantly say, hey, hey, you look like Josh Dumel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, who's that? <laughs> so uh, I went on this date a while back with this girl, and uh, we were sitting there, and she she was like, hey. You look like my ex-boyfriend. So I thought to myself, I wonder if this is a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> and then I said to her, hey, is that a good thing or a bad thing? And she said, no, it's a great thing. I love those type of guys, like the way you look. And then I was like, wow. So I thought to myself, I wonder what happened between you and your ex-boyfriend. So I said to her, Hey, I was just wondering, <laughs> what happened between you and your ex-boyfriend? And she said, oh, he died. <laughs> I was like, oh no. <laughs> so I thought for a while, and I said to myself, wow, maybe I should ask her how he died. So I said to her, hey, let's get the check so we can go back to my place and fuck. <laughs> So, uh, I, uh, I, um, uh, I, I was in, I, w I needed a mop to clean my floors, so I went to Kmart to get a mop, and, uh, I was in the mop aisle, and I grabbed the mop, and I, and I was standing there, and this lady came up to me, and she was like, hey, do you know where the Glade plugins are? And I was like, actually, I do. And, uh, right in front of me and then she was like thank you and I said well you should try pumpkin spice it's holiday festival <laughs> I don't know why I said that <laughs> but she was like thank you so much and you're so great and I'll make sure that your manager knows that on my way out <laughs> and I said wait and I stopped and thought for a second and she left and I thought to myself do I look like I work at <laughs> So, I realized I still had the mop in my hand and I had to make my purchase. <laughs> so I made forth towards the exit, and uh, there was a guy who just came barreling down an aisle and smashed over like a bunch of pasta sauce cans, and, or bottles, because cans don't break. <laughs> and then, and then they, all, they all fell on the ground, and they smashed all over the place, and I looked at the guy, and he looked at me awkwardly, and I looked awkwardly back at him, and he said, are you going to get that? What? I said, what? what? <laughs> he said, are you going to get that? And I was like, uh... So I thought to myself while I was cleaning up the... the house, so I was, this guy's a douchebag. <laughs> and that not only was I a Kmart employee, but I was the type of employee that had trouble filling out the application. <laughs> but they gave me the job because the state needed to make a quota. <laughs> but they let me take the mop. I still have it. <laughs> so uh, I, I was on I was I was I, I was on the subway last summer. Not that I just ride the subway in the summer, but I ride the subway often. But it just happened to be summer, and I was on the subway, and there was a homeless man standing there, and he looked very hot and parched. And I had a can of Dr Pepper, which I only drank about a quarter of it. And I looked at him and I said, you look very parched, would you like my Dr. Pepper? And he said, fuck no. I don't like Dr. Pepper, I like grape soda. And I was like, oh my god, homeless man. I didn't know you had a choice. I was like, if I was homeless and somebody offered me a, a can of olive oil, I would drink it. Even though it wouldn't quench my thirst. So, I was really upset by that trying to be helpful for the day, so I, I took a $5 bill out, and I was like, hey, would you like this $5 bill? And he was like, yes. And I was like, well, I mean, maybe if it was a $1 bill or a 25-cent piece, I'd give it to you, but I think you're too good for the $5. And then I got on the train, and I, I threw the can of Dr. Pepper at him and told him, have a nice fucking day living on the street. <laughs> 
but then I looked around the train and everybody was looking at me like, oh my god, that guy just yelled at some like like innocent homeless guy. <laughs> and the guy's crazy. And I was like, no, you! Jesus, that guy didn't like Dr. Pepper! Who doesn't have the 23 secret ingredients of Dr. Pepper? He's the crazy one. <laughs> and then I missed my stop to Brooklyn. <laughs> um, so, I, uh, I just got married. Yay! And, uh, before you get married, you have to, if you're, if you're Catholic, uh, which I am, uh, my wife and I are, actually, uh, you have to do a thing called pre-cana, and, uh, pre-cana is, like, classes that you take, uh, before you get married, so you can get married in the church, because the devil says it's not good to do it. I don't understand it, really. but I was there. Jesus class. Exactly, thank you. Um, so we went there, and um, we, were, we, were, we were greeted by this gentleman. I want to call him Mr. Godlove. He, he was very overweight and sweaty, and he, he had pink hair, which was awkward, because I was like, are you trying to be cool? And he was like, well, I don't know, whatever. But so he went on and on about, you know, Jesus and how you should bring God and Jesus into your marriage and everything will be okay and everything like that. And I was like, oh, well, really? And then he was like, yeah, women, you can't give your husbands blowjobs. I was like, well, what about hand jobs? He's like, no, no hand jobs. I was like, why not? He's like, because you'll spill God's seed. I was like, damn. I was like, I'm out of luck now. So, uh, so I'm thinking about it and I'm like, hey, I'm just gonna hold the Dixie cup and and catch my semen and put it in the freezer with the rest of them. Does that work? And he got mad. But, uh, so then after that, um, he started going on and on about uh, how how there was a, a a thing called a method, a rhythm method, which is like a, a time that's good to have sex with with your wife or girlfriend at the time or whatever. It should be girlfriend. I mean, it should be wife. <laughs> Yes, girlfriend's bad. If it's a little boy, it's okay. Um, so, so there was a he, he brought a oh shut up. He brought a pie graph out, and he was like, the blue period is the good time. The red period is the okay time. If she's into it more, and I was like, that's uncomfortable, pal. That's actually disgusting. And then he was like, the green period's like, no, you can't do it there. And I was like, all right, I'm going to sleep again. And uh, and then and then he stopped and he started he started talking more about uh, temptation and everything and he stopped and and started getting really serious and I was like wow this guy's really getting serious so let me wake up real quick and just pay attention again and he got real serious and uh, he was like it's like listen it's like guys I just want to let you know this throw away your Maxim magazines yes throw away your Maxim magazines and I was like what. I said, why would I throw away my Max magazines? How about my Playboys and my, my penthouses and that box of pornos and the sex stump that I have hidden under my bed? <laughs> Aren't those more offensive than a Max magazine that gives me information on how to be a straight man in the, the United States of America? And he was like, oh no. I don't know, but whatever. I forgot the end of that joke. <laughs> But wait, I'm not done yet. Because <laughs> being flashed, sometimes it's indecent, and sometimes it means you have two minutes. So, this is my last joke. I'm going to let you guys in on a secret. I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you, I do this every time when I do stand-up, and I'm going to look you guys in the eyes, which is uncomfortable for me. But I'm going to do it anyway. I just did it. Uh, I'm going to let you know that hot dogs are bad. Hot dogs are horrible. I used to love hot dogs. And then they got really, they turned on me. One day I went to a Yankees game, because I'm a Yankees fan. And I yes. drink a bunch of hot dogs. And then I went home, and I had the taste of hot dog in my mouth. So I decided to go buy a six pack of cheese hot dogs. Oh. And I ate all six cheese dogs. Oh. And then I proceeded to go to a comedy show which I was performing at. <laughs> oh, God. And then I left the comedy show and went to a party, which I was not performing at, but just getting there. <laughs> I had to think of work, but I could only think of getting there at the time. And uh, so in between the show and the party, 
Um, I was on Sixth Avenue and and my stomach kind of went away on me and it, it let, let go and you know what happens when you these guys. You kind of, yeah, you shit yourself. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'm gonna shit myself. <laughs> so I was like, I better do something about this. And mind you, I was with my friend, Woody. And uh, that's a true story. And, uh, so, so I, I started pulling my pants down and I couldn't stop it. It all happened and everything happened. And all I could look up and say to Woody was, help me, help me, help me. And, uh, <laughs> and then afterwards, he goes to me, I go to him, I go, Woody, what should I do? And he goes, I can put you in a cab. <laughs> and I said, I don't think I'm in a cab because I was going to put you in a cab right now. <laughs> So that wasn't the worst thing, because I was 27 years old, which was last year, and, uh, and this homeless man walked over, and he looked me right in the eye, and he was like, smells like shit over here, and then he looked at me again, and he goes, wow, you're disgusting. <laughs> so I threw my can of Dr. Pepper out of my throat, I'm going home with my hat, thank you very much.